Hey, Sam, now that it's uh, really here and upon us, I've got kind of a two-parter. What's it been like preparing for a team that you were, you know, with last year? And secondly, what do you expect from them offensively with a new coordinator in Monk and what kind of concepts and the quarterback situation? Well, going against Georgia, uh, we know what great talent they have and, and obviously how well they're coached. Um, they're, they're certainly a big football team. Uh, they're built for the SEC. Um, what they're going to do on offense, we're, we're, we're really not sure. I, you know, they may piece a little bit in from Ole Miss, a little bit from Southern Miss, a little bit from the Browns. Uh, uh, we're doing a little bit of all of that. We're trying to uh, be prepared for a little of a lot of different places that Munkin's been to. Obviously, um, their old line coach has uh, had experience in read and gap scheme reads. And so we're just trying to prepare for everything from the Browns all the way to Southern Miss and Ole Miss. And their quarterback situation, it looks like maybe Mathis might get the first snaps. Have you all got a sense there? No, I haven't had a personal conversation with Kirby and ask him who he's going to start. I mean, I think you're guessing as much as we are. Uh, um, but I can guarantee you, you're not you or us or anybody else going to know who that starting quarterback is from Georgia until he runs out there. And uh, that's Kirby's belief, and, and uh, that's what it should be. If that's what he believes, that's, that's what it should be. Nate. Sam, is there a contrast in styles in the two quarterbacks as far as how your defense prepares? Absolutely. I mean, uh, with JT Daniels, I mean, you, you go back and watch the Fresno State game uh, from last season, and I mean, he's just throwing darts and, and can throw at any angle. He's a shortstop. He's a right fielder. He can, he can do anything he wants with football. And, uh, of course, DeJuan, uh, you know, I was there at Georgia with DeWan, and we know what kind of arm he has. Uh, but he would be maybe a little bit more of a double threat, a dual threat, because he certainly can run. He can actually fly. He's really fast. And, uh, and uh, to be honest with you, guys, I'm really excited. If he plays against us, I'm excited. I'm excited for him uh, because he had uh, surgery uh, that – might not allow him to play, and he's come a long way. And uh, certainly, we we're not wanting to play against him because he's such a talented young man. But we're uh, I'm certainly thrilled that he has been cleared and and is ready to get his football career back on course. Um, wonderful kid, Scotty. Hey, Coach, looking through the depth chart for, for this week, I see a couple of young guys, Miles Slusher and Kari Johnson, there in your two deep. Just what did they show you in camp for you to, to put them there? Well, Slusher has, has been uh, a mature, uh, athletic guy ever since he uh, walked in the door and, um, and really, really uh, excited about his future here. He's a physical player. Very knowledgeable, well coached out of high school, and uh, he got speed. So those things uh, certainly is why he's in our our two deep. And who else did you say? I believe it was Kari Johnson. Yeah, Kari, um, very talented, uh, uh, good man coverage corner. Again. Uh, you know, in order to get on the field early as a freshman, you have to be mature. You have to be smart. Uh, you have to understand uh, schematics, the game. And again, he was well coached in high school too. But I, I, both of them are very mature for for their age. Coach, how are you feeling about like? the the veterans versus the youth on your team in the two deep and you know you have a lot of youth on your offensive line so how do you feel about that and you have Noah Gatlin um, as a backup at both spots so what have you seen from him? Well Nikki they're, to us they're the best players we have so it's not necessarily 
you know, some of them will, you're right, some of them will go out there and it'll be their first time to, to be in front of uh, the Razorback fans, but uh, they're the best players we have. And uh, certainly we're trying to uh, get confidence in them so they'll be ready to get out there. But uh, Gatlin's done a nice job on both sides, left and right. Uh, he, obviously, we're giving him an opportunity to start at right tackle, but uh, he certainly can play both spots. We are young. We understand that. But uh, young's going to get better faster than old. So we feel like we've got him in the right spot. Bob. Sam, I know the game's you know played on the field, not in some Las Vegas sports book, but you guys are 24-point underdogs. And I don't know if you watched Kirby's deal today, but I wrote this down. Somebody asked him, um, the schedule really picks up after after this game with tough SEC opponents. And then they were asking about important to set the tone for more difficult games down the road. Um, I don't know, is that what, what do you think when you hear that and being such a big underdog? Is that something you use to motivate your team? Well, it's the first game, new coach, new players. Uh, we shouldn't need anything extra to motivate us. Um, uh, Kirby Smart, I promise you, is preparing for us as hard as he would Alabama. Um, that's his makeup. Very, very uh, outstanding coach, and and uh, and he'll have his team prepared to the to the max, regardless of what the point spread line is. But um, uh, if we need motivation, it, it won't come from anybody's uh, comments. It'll come from inside. Dudley. Coach, obviously, uh, it's been a strange situation with the pandemic, but you've been able to get such a good recruiting class going, even without a lot of these guys having been able to uh, you know, get on campus. What's been the keys for your staff doing that? And, and how do you keep it going? And what can you do during uh, the fall and when they're not able to come to ca uh, campus and at least interact with y'all? Dudley, I think it's just continue to do what we're doing. You know, I, you know, uh, obviously we can't do anything person, person to person until at least January. Um, I think I'm very fortunate to hire a good group of recruiters, you know, and recruiting is constant interaction and uh, I think our guys do a really good job with that and and I think they're believable because they are just who they are you know it's not a, a fake persona of who you may may be one time and somebody else the next and I think kids and families have um, enjoyed that part of, of our coaching staff um, we still have a few more to go so that we're really concentrating on that and 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 continue to try to get the 2022 kids. Carlos. Coach Carlos Chica with Azteca America. It's a first, it's a first year here as a coach. Two things. How nervous are you about the first game and how worried about you about the first game? <laughs> well, I'd be lying to you if I didn't say I was nervous, you know, I think, but I'm nervous. I was nervous when I was an O-line coach too. Um, nervousness comes from just making sure that you're prepared in every way you possibly can be. And, and a guy that's probably not nervous probably won't be quite as prepared as he needs to be. Um, it being against Georgia, um, Never in my wildest dreams when I took the job that I think that Georgia would be the first opponent, you know. Um, but it is, and you know, I want to say this: that I'm very, very thankful and grateful to have had the opportunity to coach at Georgia and to coach under Kirby Smart. Um, I learned a lot, and uh, he was very, very good to me. Uh, when I was a kid, I graduated in 19, 1980, and that's the year that Georgia won the national championship, and there was always something there about Georgia. And then when Kirby gave me the opportunity to go there and coach there for four years, 
uh, it was an incredible experience for me. And without that, I wouldn't be the head coach here at Arkansas, uh, nor Mel Tucker at Michigan State. So forever grateful for that. However, am I nervous? Yes. And why? Because they're really good. I mean, they, they're an outstanding football team. And they're big, and they run to the football, and they'll knock you off the ball. And uh, on both sides of the line of scrimmage, they, they're as, probably as good as any team that will play this year. Um, and so it's going to be a physical football game, and you're always concerned when you know it's going to be a smash-mouth game. Uh, are you ready for that yet? And certainly we'll, we'll find out. Thank you. Yeah, Coach, you had mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, that, that Blaine Toll was really rising up the depth chart quickly, and you've got him listed uh, with an oar with, with Hudson. Uh, do you think it really helped him focusing in on the one position instead of switching back and forth between sides of the ball? And, and what kind of does he bring to the table versus uh, a Hudson Henry? Well, I think it helped him. Our plan, you know, we had him at tight end, and then uh, we – we didn't get uh, the numbers that we thought we would uh, over on defense, so we moved him over where we originally recruited him at. Um, and then we found out that we, we probably need a little more depth in the tight end room. So we moved him back. He's been there now for I don't know how long, quite a while. And uh, he's doing well. Uh, I think he, we have got the game plan uh, where he'll know what to do. Uh, because he ha does have a lot of speed. Uh, he's probably a little bit faster than Hudson would be, but Hudson's really had a good couple of weeks, so I'm feeling better and better about that tight end room. Hey, Coach, I was wondering if you could just talk about uh, what you guys have coming up this week in terms of practice schedule. Some coaches practice Monday, some don't, some practice Tuesdays. Just how you guys kind of have it laid out. And we'll have full padded practice today and tomorrow. And then we'll go in shells uh, Wednesday and Thursday and have a walkthrough on Friday. Uh, each day will, uh, the time at practice will go down uh, anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes, depending on the day. But uh, we'll do our banging a little bit here Monday, Tuesday, and, and uh back off a little bit as far as physicality uh, on Wednesday and Thursday. Jason. Hey, Coach, just the – we all know this is a line of scrimmage league. Their defensive line, how how critical is it to hit them, hit them quick and, and try to move them a little bit to get what you want to do offensively? And then flip side, their offense, you, rec you recruited a lot of those guys, coached them. Um, well, what do you know about their line and, and what you need to do yeah, defensively? Their D-line starts with Jordan Davis. I mean, he is a big, athletic, great guy, by the way, but um, just a big, athletic guy, that hard to move, you know. But their D-line with um, Devontae Wyatt and Malik Herring and Travion Walker and Aziz, Ojolari, um, they're really good. They're really big, you know. Um, so we're going to have our hands full. We're going to try to find ways to double team them. Uh, we're going to have to. And uh, then we're going to have to at least get a stalemate on some one-on-one -on -one blocking situations. And hopefully we can move them a little bit. And, and uh, hopefully we can tire them out. They've got a lot of guys that can move in and out of there. So... Uh, very, very, very talented, well-coached uh, uh, defensive line. On the O-line, you know, even though they lost several starters, they have a lot of guys that's played a lot of ball there, uh, starting in the middle with Trey Hill, probably as good a center as there is in the country. And then, you know, Jamari Sawyer's played a lot of ball, really good player, draftable kid. I mean, just really good football player. And then uh, Justin Schaefer is going to be – uh, at the left guard, probably, and then Ben Cleveland, who started a lot of games, who's a freak of nature, you know, at 340 pounds. And then their right tackle. I don't know exactly what they're going to do at right tackle, but Owen Condon's from over here in Oklahoma. Uh, 
Xavier tries somebody in there. They're, they're going to be uh, as good as, as anybody else on both sides of the ball that we play. All right, let me know if you've got more questions in the chat. Tom? Hey, Sam, we've been wondering uh, where will your coordinators be positioned on the field? Who, who'll be up, who'll be down, and uh, who, who'll be up with them? Well, I used to, on the headsets, you'd have three or four guys on the headsets. Well, now it's like 15, you know. So I don't know who all is going to be up with them. But Barry will be up and Kendall will be down. The rest of the coaches, I didn't bring that. We'll have plenty on the headsets. I know that. Going black. Hey, Coach. I know you talked about maybe nerves come Saturday, but what will the emotions be like just taking the field as head coach for the first time in this league? And, and maybe do you have any game day rituals that you kind of want to put in place here, something that you've always said, I want to do this when I'm a head coach? No, I. you know, I really don't know what the emotions will be, you know. Um, uh, I'm really looking forward to running out there with the football team. I know that uh, because uh, we've got a lot of work still yet to do, but by Saturday I feel like we'll be ready to get, go out there um, and play hard and see what happens. Uh, but I really don't know how it'll be. My family will be here, you know. Um, It'll be kind of a neat deal. You know, I'm the head coach at Arkansas. It'll be, it'll be, a, it'll be a heck of a day. Sam, you know, everybody thought George's quarterback was going to be, I guess it was new and the guy from Wake, and then he opted out. How big a surprise was that? And do you guys have a sense for who they're going to start, or do you really not, not know? No, we really don't know. Uh, I know that they played uh, – both JT and, and Dewan uh, in every every scrimmage, you know. So, uh, was I surprised about uh, the opt out? Yeah, a little bit, you know. But you know, Georgia's got some good quarterbacks, so um, I think they're loaded enough to where it won't bother them too much, you know. I understand the opt-out and the reasons and all those things, uh, but they're still loaded with uh, at least two really good quarterbacks. So I really don't have any idea who they're going to play for sure. They're probably going to play them both. Sam, did you feel you got everything accomplished that you expected to for the preseason camp? And was there anything going into this game that's actually better than you anticipated uh, during the summer? No, I don't know if it's any better than what we thought we might get. Um, and a big reason that's been COVID. I mean, you, it's hard to get um, continuity and things of that nature with quarantine and COVID and all these type things. So I think if it wasn't for that, I think we'd be right on schedule. But we're not the only team in the country that's affected by that. Everybody is. So um, I think we're probably about as, as far along as we could possibly be in our situation. That's right. Yeah, Coach, you've already talked a little bit about their D-line, but Georgia's defense as a whole, I think I saw one metric that had them as the, the top defense in the country. What are your overall thoughts on the defense, and are there any weaknesses? My thought would be that whoever said they were, they're correct. Um, they run, you know, Monty Rice, their linebacker, you know, they have a lot of really great players, but – uh, Richard LeCount runs that defense along with Monty Rice and Eric Stokes is such a great cover corner and they, um, they're just really, really talented. Uh, but the thing that they do as good as anybody in the country is they run the football and then when they get there, they're going to let you know they're there. Uh, so uh, we're going to have to out, we're going to try to, we're going to have to out strain them. We're going to have to try to be physical, we're going to have to do all these things that they're going to do because that's, they're going to try to come in here and intimidate us. It's what they're going to try to do. And 
I know that because I've coached there for the last four years. Yes, Hey, Coach, with their offensive changes, you know, they talk about the air raid, people throw that out there. How do you prepare for that? I know you're preparing for different quarterbacks, but how do you prepare for an offense that's different than when you were there and kind of the personnel and knowing what they're trying to do with that offense? Well, the great thing that we have is we have our own offense. So, you know, that, that will help us prepare a little bit um, closer than if we were just a totally – 12 personnel team and go downhill and hit you in the mouth. So I think, I think that part of it has helped us prepare a little bit. And then certainly we have different segments of scout work right now that's, that we're trying to prepare for the different schematics and the different quarterbacks that we may see. Um, therefore, you won't get as much reps, you won't get as many reps against what they're certainly going to do than you would to prepare for everything. And so that's always the thought behind not naming your quarterback, not, you know, all those things. One is you probably don't know who it's going to be yet. And two, the opponent has to prepare for two or three like we're doing for Georgia right now. Okay. Uh, yes. What's your, uh, uh, well, with playing quarterbacks, do you plan on playing both quarterbacks, the the starter and the backup, just to make sure they get a little experience, or is it just going with one, or is it just depend on how the game goes? Well, we're just trying to win the football game. So if if Felipe goes out there and he and he's playing well and all those things, and we continue to play well, well then we may have a package for this guy, a package for that guy, things of that nature. But again, there's a reason the guy's a starting quarterback and that's the guy that you want out there. Um, so we don't really have any, hey, we're going to play this guy at this time or that guy at this time. We're, we try to play our best quarterback and try to win the football game. Hey, Betty. Coach, how long exactly have you known that Felipe was going to be your starting quarterback? Was there a moment, or how did that come about for you? I don't know. Uh, uh, he's, I mean, he's been running with the ones basically ever since he got here. So, I mean, we don't we don't get up in front of our team and announce who the starting quarterback is, you know, because we don't announce who the starting center is. Um, so he'd been running with the ones, so I think it's been, been a while, Trey, it's been, been quite a while uh, that we think he would, he's going to be the guy that, that uh, takes us out there and gives us the best chance to win. Couple more. Uh, Sam, obviously you and Scott Fountain um, know a lot about Georgia, and you got a lot of guys here in staff from Missouri and Kentucky that played Georgia uh, you know, every year. Um, how, how much does that help your prep, you know, for this game? Well, I think it would help us a little bit more on offense, understanding what they're trying to do on defense. Uh, simply because uh, Kirby and Dan Lanning have been there. They were there last year, so we would anticipate, you know, because they had so much success, that they just do what they've been doing. Um, on offense, it would be a little harder because it's a new new coordinator on special teams. It would be the same because it's a new uh, special teams coordinator. We obviously know their talent, and we've talked a lot about how uh, good their talent is, um, but it would be a little bit easier to at least know where they're lined up on defense. Now blocking them and running by them will be uh, the, the problem that we would have. Last one, Jason. Hey, Coach, wide receiver separation has been an issue in the past with, with some of these guys. How have they done – 
in camp and how good do you feel about them getting separated from Georgia's receivers during or Georgia's corners and, and safeties in the game? We're getting better in that area. Um, separation comes with speed, you know, and, and uh, I think we're a little faster football team than we were, but uh, certainly uh, anybody who presses you, you know, that's the number one thing. You, can we get away from this guy? Can we get off of him? We'll see, but I think we're, uh, we've, we've done a lot better uh, the last couple of weeks of getting separation on one-on-ones uh, than we were before. So we'll have to wait and see. I know, I know Stokes and Lewis Seen are really good corners and are great cover corners. So uh, we're going to be going against some of the best. So we'll see how, how it works out.